also recently uh, Robert Sungenis, who I respect greatly as a scholar and is an amazing mind, uh, basically had some objections to my position about the consecration of Russia as far as the, the message of Fatima is understood. I know recently he's been advocating for the 1950s uh, fulfillment of the consecration. Um, I disagree with him, and uh, I've said that before. Um, I would never pretend to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Robert Sengenis in a head-to-head -head conversation because um, he's a full-time apologist, and this is this is his job. This is his full-time thing, whereas me, sort of, it's, it's part, of something, part of what I do, but it's kind of a hobby, if that makes sense. Um, but I don't agree with his assertion that the consecration has happened. Now... There are um, men who, in my opinion, are much smarter than I and have uh, extensively researched this much deeper than I ever have and probably ever will. So I trust their judgment. And one of those men, his name is Eric Birmingham, and he is, among, among other things, an apologist for Fatima issues. He recently wrote an article that we published in the Fatima Crusader. Now, I want to say I'm not speaking officially on behalf of the Fatima Center here. I'm just, as I, although I do work for them. But uh, I'm just saying that I think his article where he actually addresses uh, some Genesis recent claims is the best that we can find. I think it's the best. And um, he has a series of articles. If you go to Fatima.org, you can find those in the long form. But a modified form that we put in the magazine uh, is I'm just going to read that right now because I think that illuminates the position I understand best. Um, and I'm going to consider the matter closed after this. Uh, just because, you know, I've got other things to move on to do. Um, and again, uh, Robert Sungenis is a incredible intellect. Uh, the work that he's done on, on geocentrism, evolutionism uh, is, is indispensable, and I greatly thank him for that. I just think he's wrong on Fatima, as do many other eminent scholars like Eric Birm Birmingham, uh, Chris Ferrara, and uh, the late John Venari and so forth. Um, Archbishop Bigano right now, and, and anyway, I just think that, that that position that he has, that Robert and Dennis has, isn't correct. However, I applaud him in his efforts, and um, I hope to continue to consult his work in the future for things like geocentrism, evolutionism, which he's done, and God bless him. So I'm going to read this article. It's called, Should We Expect Another Consecration of Russia? by Eric Birmingham. It's in the most uh, recent issue of the Fatima Crusader. If you go to Fatima.org, you can find ways to order that. So I'll begin. It says, after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of the USSR in 1989, many Fatima devotees assume that the March 25th, 1984 consecration of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary by John Paul II officially had, finally had its effect. They claimed the end of the Cold War was essentially the promised period of peace and the subsequent growth of the Russian Orthodox Church was the conversion of Russia. This was interpreted as the triumph of the Immaculate Heart in the world although its effects on the individual could vary. Further, the shooting of John Paul II in the St. Peter's Square on May 13, 1981, was the fulfillment of the third secret. That seemed to be the party line of the Vatican from Cardinal Angelo Sodano on May 13, in the year 2000. There are even some people who argue that the July 7, 1952 consecration of the Russian people to the Immaculate Heart of Mary by Pius XII led to the promised period of peace and a conversion of Russia a relaxation of harsh measures used against the Russian Orthodox Church, and a detente between the world superpowers, the Korean uh, world superpowers. The Korean War, which many thought would escalate into the Third World War, came to an end shortly thereafter, and Stalin's unforeseen death dissolved his initiative, already underway to mobilize Russia for an offensive against Western Europe. However, Father Nicholas Gruner certainly did not subscribe to the theory that the consecration had been completed in 1952 or 1984. So, have we all? So we, so sorry. So, have we already had the period of peace promised at Fatima, and the conversion of Russia, and are we living in the triumphant reign of the Immaculate Heart? Can any pious Catholic devoted to Our Lady really believe that her influence and God's power is so limited as to have only achieved what we have witnessed in our world since 1952 or 1984? Or should we still expect the proper consecration of Russia by the name, by the Pope? and all the Catholic bishops on a particular day, as Sister Lucia said, that Our Lady requested. The message of Our Lady of Fatima given to the children on July 13, 1917, includes these lines. In the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph, the Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me, and she shall be converted, and a period of peace will be granted to the world. 
The entire message of Fatima is intimately tied up in those words. As late as May 13th, 2010, Pope Benedict XVI said, he deceives himself who thinks the prophetic mission of Fatima is concluded. May the seven years which separate us from the centenary of the apparitions hasten the fulfillment of the prophecy of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary to the glory of the Most Holy Trinity. It would appear that at least he did not think the Immaculate Heart had yet triumphed in 2010. So, what would the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary look like, and how would we be able to know that it had been accomplished? One would certainly think that there would be worldwide devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, that we, would be, that we would not be living under the threat of armed conflicts all over the globe and even nuclear war, and that the Catholic Church would be strong and healthy. One would think Christ's social and universal kingship would be publicly acknowledged by nations, as Our Lady's reign is inseparable from her sons. Yet, is there any nation on earth today that recognizes and submits to Christ's kingship? At the very least, you would think that prior to her death, Sister Lucia would have been in the best position to answer those questions before she was formally silenced by the Vatican in 1958. She gave several interviews in the 1940s and 1950s, which clearly reveal what she thought. Before I continue, I know there's controversy on whether or not she was technically silenced, but de facto, let's just put it that way. These testimonies are extremely important because it is credibly argued that argued that purported interviews and documents subsequent to her silencing were falsely attributed to Sister Lucia. William Thomas Walsh spoke with Sister Lucia in 1946 about Our Lady's request that Russia is consecrated by the Pope together with the bishops to her Immaculate Heart. Sister Lucia told Professor Walsh, What Our Lady wants is that the Pope and all the bishops in the world shall consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart on one special day. If this is done, she will convert Russia and there will be peace. If it is not done, the errors of Russia will spread through every country in the world. Walsh asked if that meant every country without exception will be overcome by communism, including the USA. Sister Lucia answered in the affirmative. So the triumph of communism would be, the, would be universal unless Our Lady's requests were fulfilled. With the lockdowns, extreme mandates, increasing government tyranny, and the U.S. elections of 2020, it appears that the errors of Russia have indeed spread through every country. Furthermore, the world has not had any period of peace since Our Lady of Fatima appeared. These undeniable truths indicate that what Our Lady wanted has not been done. To think that Russia had been converted in the 1950s or even the 1990s, only to have communism take over every other country in some fashion in the world in the 2020s, would be a strange way to have the message of Fatima fulfilled. Moreover, to this day, the Russian Orthodox Church remains uh, in a state of schism with the Catholic Church refusing to accept the infallible Catholic doctrine of the papacy or the Pope's authority. Yet the Pope plays a central role in the message of Fatima, more so than in any other Marian revelation. It is the Pope who must lead the consecration, the bishops must be united to him, and the Pope is the central figure in the vision of the third secret. The first and oldest error of Russia is rejecting the papacy, which the Russian Orthodox Church did uh, at the time of the schism. Um, when Our Lady speaks of Russia's errors, it must certainly include this error. But before I continue, this is a position essentially that um, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart would actually lead to a reunion between the two churches, which is something that we should hope for. I continue. When Our Lady speaks of Russia converting, she can only mean Russia will accept the entire Catholic faith and be united to the one holy Catholic Apostolic and Roman Church. Anything less is not a real conversion. To imply that Our Lady is limited to granting a modernist, a modernist version of conversion is, quite frankly, offensive to what Our Lady would ask. Before I continue, um, I will also say um, there's been a rise in Christian sentiment amongst uh, Russian Christians, which is good, um, but clearly the churches still are not united, which is a problem. I continue. Father Thomas McGlynn order of preachers, conducted several interviews with Sister Lucia in 1947 in connection with his work of sculpting a statue of Our Lady of Fatima as she appeared on June 13, 1917. They are recorded in the book Vision of Fatima, which was put up by Sophia Institute Press in 2017. It was exactly 12 years after that apparition on June 13, 1929, that Our Lady came, together with a theophany of the Trinity, to ask the consecration be done. As Sister Lucia recounted, our Lady said, 
the moment has come in which God asks of the Holy Father to make and to order that in union with him and at the same time all the bishops of the world make the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart, promising to convert it because of this day of prayer and worldwide reparation. Note that the request reparation was to be worldwide, not just confined to a particular place. This was another indication of the message of Fatima, that the message of Fatima has universal applications. When Father McGlynn asked Sister Lucia about the consecration of Russia, she was emphatic in saying that Our Lady did not ask for the consecration of the world, but of Russia. Father McGlynn knew that Pope Pius XII had consecrated the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary on October 31st, 1942, and asked Sister Lucia if Our Lady's request had been uh, complied with. She said, as Our Lady made it, no. Whether Our Lady accepted the consecration made in 1942 as fulfilling her wish, I don't know. But heaven could not permit such doubt about so crucial a question to persist for long. Therefore, in May of 1952, Our Lady herself appeared yet again to Sister Lucia, to repeat and clarify her Fatima request. Make it known to the Holy Father that I will await the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart. Without this consecration, Russia cannot be converted, nor can the world have peace. Despite the light of this special revelation, vast numbers of Catholic leaders and faithful alike have allowed themselves to be persuaded that John Paul II's 1984 consecration of the world, explicitly described as a mere renewal of Pius XII's 1942 consecration, satisfied Our Lady of Fatima's request for the consecration of Russia. Truly, we have been enveloped by a diabolical disorientation. Sister Lucia had also insisted that if the consecration of Russia had been made according to the promise of Our Lady, World War II would, not have, ha would, would have been prevented. When asked about the details of the consecration, she said in 1929, Our Lady commanded that the Holy Father consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart and that he command all the bishops to do it in, also in union with him at the same time. Although Pius XII did consecrate the Russian people to the Immaculate Heart of Mary on July 7th, 1952, by means of an apostolic letter, he did not do it in a public ceremony with all the bishops as directed by Our Lady. He did not do it with the bishops. That's important. Our Lady told the children of Fatima on July 13th, 1917, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. Note that it was not just in the Catholic Church where the devotion was intended, but in the whole world. This was confirmed in part when Father McGlynn asked Sister Lucia if every Catholic was supposed to pray the rosary. Sister Lucia replied that when Our Lady said, pray the rosary always, it was addressed to everyone in general. Before I continue here, um, it is important to understand, to establish in the world devotion to the Immaculate Heart. <clears throat> and I have Orthodox friends who I respect and care for very much. Um, but the Immaculate Heart dogma is still hotly contested amongst the Orthodox. So it seems like that has not been fulfilled, which again, if this consecration had happened, we should see that taking place. Continuing. Further confirmation of the universal aspect of the Fatima message was given when Sister Lucia was asked about Our Lady's request that men not offend Our Lord anymore. Father McGlynn asked, Did Our Lady address this to you three children or to the whole world? Sister Lucia replied, I believe it was for the whole world. Again, universal. Not only has the world not taken up the practice of praying the rosary, um, even, the, or even the Eastern Orthodox do not have that practice. Further, the Orthodox do not recognize that Mary was immaculately conceived officially without sin. It is inexplicable how someone could think that having Russia convert back to its Orthodox practice would fulfill Our Lady's request to, for everyone to pray the rosary always. And Our, Lady's, and Our Lord's request to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in the world when the Orthodox Church do not even pray the rosary or believe specifically, as we understand it, in the Immaculate Conception. This is a problem. Continuing. Finally, at Fatima, Our Lady asked for both the consecration of Russia and the communion of reparations on the first Saturdays as the means by which her Immaculate Heart would triumph and the world would be granted a period of peace. Clearly, the communion of reparation on the first Saturdays is not a widespread devotion outside of mainly traditional or pious circles. Very few people, even among faithful Catholics, practice the devotion. Very few par parishes promote this practice and even take the necessary steps to make it available. This is true. We must all fervently and diligently promote the daily prayer of the rosary and the practice of the first Saturdays to spread devotion to the Immaculate Heart and thereby merit the graces necessary for the proper and long-awaited consecration of Russia. In 1957, 
Father Justin Fuentes interviewed Sister Lucia, and she had this to say. Father, the Blessed Virgin is very sad because no one heeds her message, neither the good nor the bad. Believe me, Father, God is going to punish the world, and very soon. The chastisement of heaven is imminent. Many nations will disappear from the face of the earth, and Russia will be the instrument of chastisement unless all of us, by prayer and sacrifice, obtain the conversion of that poor nation. I'm going to pause there for a second. So we see, this is just my commentary, we see this as a conditional prophecy. And she says, many nations will appear, disappear from the face of the earth unless all of us, by prayer and sacrifice, obtain the conversion of that poor nation. So, in fairness to those who, this is just Kennedy Hall's personal opinion, in fairness to those who uh, look at the rise in Christian sentiment in Russia as a good thing, I believe that's a good thing. Um, and I believe the trajectory away from the materialist atheism of the Stalinist era towards the piety of the Russian Orthodox Church is a good thing compared to what it was previously. So whether or not um, this idea of nations being annihilated in the specific sense has taken place or will take place, there's many ways to interpret that. Um, we do see it as a conditional, uh, conditional prophecy, if that makes sense. And therefore, we can hope that the pious prayers of monks and priests and nuns and old ladies with rosaries and icons all over the world has had some effect. But nonetheless, we see in 1957 uh, that things don't look too good in the eyes of Sister Lucy. Tim and I spoke about the Father Puentes interview in a recent episode of our show. And although there was controversy about it, the official Vatican archivist, Father Alonso, said, yes, there's nothing wrong with this interview, uh, even if he had issues with some of the things Father Fuente said personally. But as far as what um, Sister Lucia had recounted, there doesn't seem to be an issue. Continuing. The universal application of the message of Fatima is expressed again. Obviously, Sister Lucia did not think that Russia had already converted or that there was worldwide devotion to the Immaculate 1957, which begs the question about the 1952 consecration. The situation in the world has certainly not improved since then. The decade of the 1960s is usually described as being heavily influenced by sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Vatican II was held during that time, and we are still reeling from its influence today. The Vietnam War fought during that decade was an embarrassing failure of the United States to keep the communists out of Vietnam, which is still communist today in some fashion. Wars have continued to be fought all over the globe, and the world at large has yet, has, has yet to experience any semblance of peace. In 1973, abortion was legalized in the United States. Um, the failure of many U.S. bishops and Catholic politicians has led to the intentional uh, killing of millions of unborn children, and abortion is the leading cause of death in the world by a wide margin, responsible for more than 40% of the deaths today. Our Lady appeared to Sister Agnes Sasagawa of Akita, Japan, in that same year with a dire warning. Cardinal Ratzinger, the future Pope Benedict XVI, was convinced that Akita was an extension of Fatima. It's true, he said this. The message given on October 13th, again, 56th anniversary of the miracle of the sun, was this. My dear daughter, listen well to what I have to say to you. As I told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all of humanity. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one will never have seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity. The good as well as the bad, sparing neither priests nor faithful. The survivors will, find them, survivors will find themselves so desolate they will envy the dead. The work of the devil will infiltrate even into the church in such a way that one will see cardinals opposing cardinals and bishops against other bishops. The priests who venerate me will be scorned and opposed by their confreres. Churches and altars sacked. The church will be full of those who accept compromises and the demons will press many priests and consecrated souls to leave the service of the Lord. The demon will especially be especially implacable against souls consecrated to God. The universal application of this message is un sorry, that's the end of that quote. The universal application of this message is unmistakable. A terrible punishment on all of humanity greater than the deluge greater than the deluge. This is very similar to the universal application of the message of Fatima. And this universe, universality clearly demonstrates that, that the limited and provincial blessings which followed from the 1952 and 1984 consecrations are mere shadows of the divinely promised effects of the proper consecration of Russia. If it is God's wish to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in the world, and not just in the Church, this is surely to get the world to realize Our Lady's universal spiritual motherhood derived from the fact that she is the Mother of God. Rightly, too, she is honored is she honored as co-redemptrix and mediatrix of all grace. God wishes, God's wish is that the entire world that is 
sorry, is that the entire world recognize that it has salvation in Jesus through Mary by having the Pope and all the Catholic bishops in the world consecrate rush to her immaculate heart on one special day. The world needs to wake up to that fact if it does not want to face a terrible punishment. Article finished. A couple pieces of commentary before I continue. As with all things with Fatima and private revelation, uh, of course, Akita is, is, is a recognized official. Uh, uh, it's been approved, so we can trust the words. Most of it does seem to be uh, taking place. We do see uh, um, cardinals against cardinals and so on and so forth. Those who are consecrated to Our Lady are usually persecuted hotly within the church. You see this with many priests. I don't know how to interpret this punishment that will be greater than the deluge. Sometimes I wonder, though, um, from a moral perspective, this is when abortion was legalized in the United States of America, which is sort of the world's superpower, I guess. And um, it, <laughs> it, I know it, it talks about fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity. Uh, perhaps that could be understood metaphorically. If it is understood metaphorically, um, what's happened to the unborn since 1973 when this prophecy came about has been, if we were to look back on it in the history books, it would look like one of the greatest chastisements in the history of mankind. Let's be honest. And in any case, this was a short version of Eric Birmingham's uh, article, um, which can be found in a series of articles on the Fatima website, Fatima.org. And just so you know, Eric Birmingham is author of Creation versus Evolution and the World from the Beginning to End in the Era of Peace. Both books are available from the Colbe Center or Amazon.com. So support his work. Um, this was a, again, third of the length or a quarter of the length of, he goes more into the specifics of what actually Robert Sungenis said in his book. He sort of takes it apart piece by piece. This is all I'll say about the matter. Um, I hold the position that uh, is sort of the mainstream amongst uh, traditionally minded Catholics as far as the consecration of Russia. Robertson Dennis has done some incredible work. He's an amazing scholar. His work on evolutionism and geocentrism is second to none, and I hope that he continues that. Uh, no ill will if he disagrees with my position, uh, but for myself, I will consider this manner adjourned. Now, before I sign off here, please go to crusadechannel.com forward slash Kennedy. Sign up for my new show. $10 a month. People have asked, how can we support you with Patreon and so forth? That's how you can support me. This is a conservative talk radio from the perspective of a faithful Catholic. So you always know you're getting the opinions that you trust. And you can find a way to make sense of this world. And I promise when you're listening to that show, you will feel recharged and refreshed. It is a daily drive time afternoon commute show. So when you finish your long day at work, you throw on the Crusade Channel radio station that you can use through the internet or through the app. And you can listen to conservative talk radio from somebody you trust and I promise you might even be able to hear my beard through the speakers. God bless. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.